Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the fourth lecture of module 3 of the course Game Theory and Economics. So before we start, uh, let me recapitulate what we have done in the previous lecture. Uh, what we have done in the previous lecture is that we have discussed various aspects of uh, Kurno model. Kurno model is a model of oligopoly market where there are few firms who are competing with each other. And uh, we want to find out in this market, what is the output level that will be set by each firm and consequently what will be the total output uh, produced by all the firms put together and hence what will be the price, equilibrium price in the ma market. And uh, based on our observations uh, regarding the various aspects of Kurno model, we have found that um, the Kurno model essentially depicts the situation of uh, prisoner's dilemma in the sense that the firms are competing with each other and by competing with each other, they are earning a level of profit which is less than what they could have earned had they come together and uh, taken a joint decision as to what, ma what output that they, uh, they will produce. That we have seen. Uh, today we are going to conclude that this part, this part of discussion of Kurno model by talking about a general model of this sort of uh, behavior by different firms. Uh, so let me start with this discussion. Uh, this is the question. A group of n firms uses a common resource to produce output. As more of the resource is used, any given firm can produce less output. Denote by xi the amount of resource used by firm i i goes from 1 to n. Assume specifically that firm i's output is x i multiplied by 1 minus x1 plus x2 dot 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 x n. If x1 plus x2 dot 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 plus x n is less than equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. Each firm i chooses x i to maximize its output. Formulate this situation as a strategic game, compare this with the Kurno model and find an action profile at which firms output levels are at a higher level. So what we have essentially is that <coughs> Xi is the resource used by firm i and this resource can at most be uh, 1. So, x i can vary between 0 and 1. This is a natural resource, uh, so which means that the total amount of resource available in the entire economy is denoted by 1. What we further know is that if ith firm uses this resource xi, it is able to produce some output and this output let us call it, call it qi is given by xi multiplied by summation xi, so let us call xj, j goes from 1 to n. If This is the summation is less than 1 or equal to 1 and 0 otherwise. So each firm, uh, for example, ith firm wants to maximize this qi which is the output of, uh, of that firm. 
uh, what we need to do is that we have to uh, model this as a this situation as a strategic game find the uh, and we have to compare this with the model of Kurno model that we have uh, seen before and find its Nash equilibrium. So, here if I have to see this as a strategic game then I have to specify these three components here the players are the firms n in number actions are the resource used given by x i, x i is always less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0. And finally, payoff or preferences represented by the output level which they want to maximize which is given by q i so this is the setting this is the this is the uh, game theoretic representation of this situation <coughs> uh, so if I have to compare this with the Kuno model that we have seen before, uh, what can, what are the parallels? Uh, remember in the Kuno model, the firms were maximizing their profit. So, that pi i, the profit of each firm is equivalent to q i here, the, the output that each firm is producing. Uh, so, maxim p i was the payoff function which they were maximizing and it was given by x i multiplied by alpha minus c minus x 1 minus x 2. So, this is the profit function of firm i. However, I used q i in I did not use x i, but nevertheless uh, I can assume that q i is equal to x i without loss of generality. Now, if I compare this with the setting that I have right now, then what are the parallels that we have? The parallel is that alpha is equal to 1, uh, because the first constant we have in this setting is 1, whereas the constant term in the, that setting um, was the first constant uh, was alpha. Secondly, the cost of each firm cost of each firm in uh, in the Kuno model was C per unit cost. Here I see that there is no such component here. So, which means that C in the new setting is essentially equal to 0 uh, comparing this with the Kuno model. So, these are the two uh, parallels that we have between the Kuno model and our present model. Now, if I have to find out what is the Nash equilibrium, uh, so we can proceed as uh, as we had done before in the previous lecture. That uh, firstly we show uh, or that in the Nash equilibrium the output levels of each firm will be equal. 
uh, that is not a very big deal, we can just follow the previous technique. The question is if they are equal, suppose uh, they are equal that is x i star is equal to x 2 uh, x 1 star is equal to x 2 star etcetera etcetera x n star suppose is this is equal to x star. So, suppose this is the Nash equilibrium output level and which uh, we can show very easily that they are equal of each firm. Then what is the level? That is a important question. Now that we can sh find out by again looking at the first order conditions because like before as in the Kuno model uh, the way to find out Nash equilibrium is that we are going to find out the best response function of each firm and from the best response functions of uh, the firms we can find out the Nash equilibrium by solving them simultaneously. So, for firm I this is what he maximizes uh, with respect to x i. Now, so first order condition is that uh, this q i this is q i this should be equal to 0 which means that 1 minus this entire thing uh, x 1 plus x 2 dot 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 x n minus x i this is equal to 0. Now, there is a x i term in this bracket also in this parenthesis which means that 1 minus 2 x i <coughs> minus summation x j i is not equal to j it goes to n is equal to 0 which means that x i half of 1 minus this. Uh, now, what we know is that in equilibrium for all i and so it means that x star all this uh, n minus 1 x stars will have to be added up which means that there are n minus 1 x star and if I take this to, to the left hand side 1 plus n minus 1 divided by 2. So, this is the Nash equilibrium output level of not output level resource used by each firm in the Nash equilibrium it is given by 1 divided by n plus 1. Now, uh, output level is a little different concept. So, in Nash equilibrium what is the equilibrium output level? It 
it is given by as before we have seen a q star suppose forgetting about the subscript it is given by x star minus all this uh, terms here so which means n terms are there multiplied by x star and so this is 1 divided by n plus 1 and so it is 1 divided by n plus 1, 1 divided by n plus 1. So, this is the output level in the Nash equilibrium which uh, the firms will be producing, each firm will be producing. Uh, this is the Nash equilibrium. Now, there is a last part to the question which says that find an action profile x1, x2, xn at which each firm's output is higher uh, than it is at the Nash equilibrium. So, basically what is being asked is that is this a situation of a prisoner's dilemma in the sense that in the Nash equilibrium we are having an output level which is given by 1 divided by n plus 1 whole square. But is it possible that uh, the, the firms can produce some other output levels uh, at which, the, which that level is higher than this level, uh, ca can it be possible? So, is it is in the terms of prisoner's dilemma. Is it possible that uh, the prisoners do not uh, confess and each of them uh, will be having higher payoff? Is, is that a probable situation? Can we find such uh, an action profile? <coughs> uh, we can take the following. Here, what we have here is x star that is the resource used by each firm given by 1 divided by 1 plus n plus 1. Uh, now, suppose x let us call it x bar is equal to not 1 divided by n plus 1, but 1 divided by 2 n. Uh, now, is this greater than x star or less than x star? Uh, I claim that x bar is less than x star. Why? If this is true, then this must be true, which means that 2 n is greater than n plus 1, which means n is greater than 1 and which is true. Number of firms in this uh, model uh, it has to be greater than 1 uh, because if it is equal to 1 the model loses the very uh, its very core of it that there are firms which are taking decision interdependently. So, uh, the number of firms must be greater than 1 otherwise it does not make any sense. Now, if the number of firms is greater than 1 then we know that if I have each firm's resources given by 1 divided by 2 n that resources is less than the Nash equilibrium resource use. Now, each, if each firm produces 1 divided by 2 n, then what is the output level? What is q i for example? It is given by x i that is 1 divided by 2 n multiplied by 1 minus there are n such firms this each firm is producing 1 divided by 2 n there are n such firms. So, the total output is n divided by 2 n. Which is equal to 1 divided by 4 n. So, the output level in this uh, new set of resources that is 1 divided by 2 n is 1 divided by 4 n. Question is, is 1 divided by 4 n greater than the output level that they were achieving before which is 
1 divided by n plus 1 whole square. Is this true? Uh, let us see. If this is true, then uh, it must happen that 4 n is less than n plus 1 whole square. And which again is true because n is greater than 1. Uh, the number of firms can uh, at least it has to be 2, uh, it can be more than 2. In those cases, n minus 2 whole square has to be greater than 0. So, we have indeed found a set of resource uses and a set of output levels, consequent a set of output levels uh, which is which are those output levels which are higher than the equilibrium Nash equilibrium output levels. Which means that this setting um, that the firms are deciding on their output levels uh, by in a, in a competitive environment that gives their output levels a lower value compared to an alternative uh, output uh, set of output levels. Which means this indeed uh, is a case of prisoner's dilemma and it basically generalizes the Kuhn equilibrium case. Uh, people tend to produce more than the level at, wh at which their output levels or their profit level could have been higher. And as a result there is a question, there is an issue of overgrazing. Uh, there is a common resource here and people tend to overuse that common resource and by doing so, they produce less benefit for themselves. So, that is the general conclusion. So, this is more or less about the Kuno model. Now, one basic fact about Kuno model was that we were trying to uh, model a market where firms are competing with each other by setting different output levels. And uh, these output levels are decided upon strategically in the sense that I will set that output level which maximizes my profit, whereas I know that the output level set by other firms might affect my profit. Now, this so the entire thing is happening through the setting of output levels. Uh, but this is not the only kind of way to uh, formulate a market. Uh, when Kuno wrote his uh, thesis on uh, how to formulate a market in the early 19th century, later on another Frenchman called Bartra reviewed Kuno's work and he came up with an alternative way to model how markets behave, how we can understand markets. So, uh, the next topic that we are going to cover is regarding Bartram's model. So, this Bartram model is essentially like the Kuno model, a uh, model of market, oligopoly market, but there are differences. Differences in the sense that here it is not the quantity which will be decided strategically by uh, each firm. The output levels of each firm is not the decision variable, rather it is the price, uh, the, the firms decide their individual prices uh, strategically and try to maximize their profit as they were doing before. Uh, so, that is the thing. And uh, so, the basic questions that we were trying to answer in the Kuno model remain the same. For example, we are going to look at how uh, the market demand is going to affect the equilibrium. What is the equilibrium to begin with? If the firms uh, earn any positive profit in the equilibrium, what are the output levels and what are the price levels in equilibrium. And we are going to look at if there are some other parametric changes in this setting like if the demand uh, rises or falls in the market, how is that going to affect the equilibrium. 
uh, if there is some technological innovation for example, if the cost of each firm changes then how is that going to affect the equilibrium and uh, if the competition changes for example, if more firms enter the market is that going to change the equilibrium. So, these are the basic questions that we, we were trying to answer before and they remain the same, uh, but the answers might be different here. So, this is the Bartra model. So, to begin with uh, firms are there, they are setting prices. So, different firms dif set their prices differently, might set their prices differently and uh, the output that they are producing are of similar quality. So, which means that uh, if I set a price suppose 5 rupees for my product and my rival sets a price of rupees 4 for his product and if we take our goods to the market, same market, the customers are not able to distinguish between my product and his product. There, are, there is no qualitative difference between the products. And if that is the case, then there is no reason why any customer will come to me because my price is higher. So, it means that the producer who is charging a low price is going to capture the market. Uh, that is one basic uh, inference that we can draw. Uh, if the prices are the decision variables. So, so that is the first thing and secondly we can also uh, we can also assume that if the prices set by me and my rival uh, is the same price then we can uh, safely assume that the mark is, market is going to be divided between us. So, that is an assumption we can play around with this assumption we shall do it later on in some more uh, uh, extension uh, uh, version of this model, extended version of this model. Uh, so, like before the demand function uh, is a linear function, a simple linear function. given by q is equal to alpha minus p. Remember this was the demand function. Uh, while uh, talking about the Kuno model, we just inverted it and used the <coughs> used p as a function of q. So, uh, this q is now taken as a function of p, the original demand function, not the inverted function. Uh, and this is true if p is less than equal to alpha, alpha is greater than 0, is equal to 0 if p is greater than alpha. And like before, uh, we are going to assume a very simple cost function that is C i q i is the output level of firm i. C i q i is the cost of production of firm i which produces the level q i of output. It is given by small c multiplied by q i which means that for one unit of output the cost that firm i has to bear is small c. And like before we are going to assume alpha is greater than c, greater than 0. Now, from this it is clear that if the price that I set is P, then per unit profit is P minus C, because by selling one unit of output I am earning P, 
uh, for producing that one unit of output I am bearing a cost of me C which means that P minus C is my uh, profit per unit. My total profit will be how much? This is the profit per unit I have to multiply this with the total output I am producing total the aggregate level of output I am producing how much units I am producing. Uh, if I set a price of P what is the quantity that I am going to sell in the market? This is just given by the uh, demand curve. So Q is equal to alpha minus P. This is the quantity that I am going to sell in the market if the price that I set is P. Assuming that there are no other firms in the market. Suppose I am the only firm in the market. Uh, in that case profit for me will be alpha minus P which is the output multiplied by profit per unit of output. So this is the total profit that I am going to earn if I am the sole producer and if it is the price that I am setting in the market. Uh, so this is the general formula for profit if there is no rival. Uh, before we look into the various nitty gritties of this model, uh, one more important assumption that I need to clarify is that in this model if I announce a price P, it may happen that that price is less than the cost of production that is that price is less than C. But nevertheless if I have announced a price, um, many customers will come to me knowing that price. And then that demand I have to cater to irrespective of whether I am making loss or a profit. So it is now my onus to cater to that demand. And we are going to assume that there is no constraint on the firms to produce that level of output. Which means that uh, if I have to, if the market demand is 1000 and I am getting that demand, I can produce that 1000 uh, unit of output. Uh, there is no restriction on that. It may happen that by producing that 1000 unit of output I am making losses but that is immaterial to this setting. If I am getting demand I have to cater to that. So this is the setting. Now if I have to model this setting in terms of game theory again uh, as in any strategic game I have to specify three components of this game. One is players. Here the firms are the players. So in general there are n firms, two prices. So what are the prices in this model? Prices are uh, any non-negative numbers, sorry this is not, I should not have written prices, this is actions. Prices are the actions it can be 0 also hypothetically and finally preferences. So preferences are represented by by profit and how do I represent that uh, profit? So suppose firm I am talking about firm I any representative firm uh, the profit of firm I is given by uh, price is given by P multiplied by Q minus cost that is the first principle. But if I uh, charge a price of P then what is the quantity that I get? This is given by demand function but there is something else. Uh, M is the number of firms which are charging the same price uh, and this price is the lowest price in the market multiple minus Q of this where 
i is one of the So, let me explain this. So, firm I is charging price P. If firm I is one of the M firms which are charging the lowest price, then the demand in the market is going to be divided between this M firms. And so, each firm will get the total demand in the market divided by M because the market is being shared equally. So, each firm is going to get DP, D P is the demand function minus the cost uh, and your cost of production depends on the quantity that you produce. How much quantity are you producing here? It is given by D P divided by M, the, the portion of the market you are catering to. So, that is why the total profit is P multiplied by Q minus CQ which is same as P multiplied by uh, DP divided by M minus C which is a function of DP uh, divided by M. Uh, this is true if I is one of the firms charging the lowest price, if not then what happens? Pi I is equal to 0 if I is not if i is not one of the firms charging the low the lowest price then i is not getting any demand in the market in that case it does not produce any output. If it does not produce any output, its cost is 0, uh, the revenue is also 0 because it is not catering to any demand. So, this is the uh, story. Uh, notice if uh, I is the only firm which is ch charging the lowest price, in that came case M is just equal to 1. Uh, which means that uh, the profit function is just P multiplied by DP multi, uh, minus C of DP, uh, M is equal to 1. So, this is the general setting, these are the preferences and the preferences are represented by the profit function. Now, uh, what we are going to do now is that we are going to find out the Nash equilibrium of this model. And while doing so, we are going to simplify this model a little bit. We are going to assume that uh, there are only two firms. So, n is equal to 2 and like before the demand function is given by d is equal to alpha minus p and the cost function is given by c q is uh, cost of production is just unit cost small c multiplied by the level of output. Uh, now, if that is the case, then uh, what is the profit that each firm is earning? I can succinctly write this as follows. If firm I is the I which is charging the lowest price, then we have just seen that the price, the profit that it is going to earn is given by this where P i is the price charged by firm i if P i is strictly less than P j. Remember there are only two firms i uh, 1 and 2. If i is equal to 1, j is equal to 2 and vice versa. It is equal to uh, what if P i is equal to P j? 
if pi is just equal to pj then the market is getting divided each firm is getting half of the demand uh, which means that uh, q that we were talking about q was equal to alpha minus p each firm will get only half of it which means that this first component the first co the alpha minus pi the first term within the bracket uh, each firm will get only half of that which means that this is going to be alpha minus pi divided by 2 multiplied by pi minus c if pi is equal to pj and finally uh, if ith firm's price is greater than the jth firm's price nobody is going to come to him and its demand that it caters to is going to be zero cost of production is going to be zero and so profit is going to be zero so this is the last case so here i can be 1 or 2 now we are going to find out the nash equilibrium given this setting uh, before we systematically find what is the nash equilibrium uh, let us try to look at the response of each firm given the price charged by the other firm we know that the unit cost of production of each firm is given by small c now if my rival charges a price which is greater than c uh, then what will be my best response or what price shall i charge to maximize my profit uh, remember here price that is pi or pj is a continuous variable it can take any fractional value no matter what uh, how close it is to a particular value it can take any uh, closest possible uh, uh, fractional value now if the price of the other firm is any value greater than c then if i charge the price that he is charging then we share the market equally so i get some profit because uh, why i am getting some profit because the price in that case is greater than c and if the price is greater than c there is positive profit margin and if there is positive profit margin the pro total profit is obviously positive but how what is the price that i charge which maximizes my profit uh, if i charge the price just equal to his price I share the market earn positive profit but can I do better and the answer is yes I if I charge a price which is a, just a little bit less than C I capture the entire market because remember if my price is less the customers are going to come to me not go to him and in that case I cater to the entire market so instead of sharing the market with him it's better all of course for me to charge a price which is a little less and get the entire demand in the market so uh, that is my best response however if i look at this profit function this uh, pi i is equal to alpha minus p mul multiplied by pi, p mi pi minus c uh, this profit function tells me that at a particular price this profit must be this profit function must be attaining its maximum it's going to be a concave profit function uh, now which means that if the other rival my rival is not there in the market there is an optimum price at which my profit is getting maximized and that is the monopoly price that is the price i should have charged if there was no competition which means that if my rival is charging a price greater than that monopoly price my optimal response should not be charge a little less than his price but charge that monopoly price uh, and that monopoly price might be quite uh, 
less, it might be much lower than the price that he is charging. So, in, the, in those quick cases, my strategy is not to undercut him, but forget about his price, but charge the price that maximizes this pi i. So, these are the two cases of where his price is more than c. If his price is less than c, then what should I do? If his price is less than c, uh, then remember if I charge a price less than his price, I get the market, but what is the profit? It is negative because the profit margin is negative here. It's, uh, the price is less than his price is less than c. So, it is not optimal for me to charge a price which is less than his price. Uh, is it uh, what, then what is the optimal thing to do? I shall not charge a price less than his price, neither shall I charge a price which, which is just equal to his price because if I charge a price just equal to his price, again the market is getting divided. If the market is getting divided, then the negative profit that he is earning, I get half of it which is not a very good thing to do. Uh, so, in that case what I should do is to charge a price which is just a little higher than his price. So, that is what I should do. And finally, if his price is just equal to C that there is no profit margin, he is get, getting 0 profit in that case, uh, then uh, it is not optimal for me to charge a price which is less because if I do, I get negative profit. Uh, in that case either I can charge his price in which case my profit is 0, but it is equally well if I charge a price higher than his price. In that case also I get 0 profit. So, this is the general discussion, but uh, can we from this general discussion find out what is the best response functions, function of each firm and uh, what is the Nash equilibrium. So, let us look at that. To begin with, let us try to draw the profit function. So, this is p i and this is pi. I know the profit function is given by this now if p i is equal to 0 this profit is a negative quantity which is minus c alpha which means it has a negative intercept uh, given that it has a negative intercept at what points uh, does this profit function intersect this horizontal axis that is p i uh, p i is 0 sorry pi i is 0 if p i is either c in which case the first term is 0 or if pi p i is equal to alpha in which case the second term is 0. I know that alpha is greater than c. So, if c is here somewhere here and alpha should be somewhere at a higher level. So, these are the points through which the curve will go through, it will have a negative intercept, let us call this to be minus alpha c and what about the shape of the curve? It, this curve is going to be a concave curve, concave to the p i axis. I know that because if I take the second derivative of pi i with respect to p i, I get a negative term which is minus 2. If the second derivative is uh, negative quantity, then the curve is a concave curve. So, the curve will be most likely having a shape like this. So, this is the shape of the profit function and there is a point just in between which I shall call P m at which profit is getting maximized, which means that if there is no other firm, there is no rival to this firm, firm I, then the firm I should charge a price p m. 
because at, it, at that point the profit is getting maximized. So, that is the ideal situation for the firm. But what happens if there is a rival? Uh, now, if there is a rival, then the rival charges a price PJ. Now, depending on the location of PJ, how PJ compares to PI, the response of I will be different and that is what we have seen just now for, from our discussion. So, and the crucial thing to decide or the crucial thing to consider is the relationship between PJ and C. Uh, for example, suppose PJ is here, this is PJ suppose. So, the rival firm is charging a price less than the unit cost of production. In that case, what is the price that I should charge? Uh, well, if the rival firm is charging a price less than is equal to P j which is less than C, uh, then this part of the curve, this part which is after C, no after P j is getting, it is not relevant anymore because if I charge a price greater than P j, my profit is not given by this curve, but by my profit is given by this uh, horizontal axis because I am getting 0 profit. If I charge a price just equal to P j, then my market is divided, the market is divided between he, him and me and so I get half of the profit that he is earning, he is earning a negative profit, I get half of that, so I get profit which is half of that. So, my profit function is this part because if I charge a price less than his price, uh, my profit function is coinciding with this curve. If my price is just equal to PJ, I get half of the market given by this point. If my price is higher than PJ, I get profit represented by the horizontal axis. In that case, what should I do? The ideal thing for me to do will be charging a price greater than PJ, strictly greater than PJ. But that price can be any price, it does not matter what price it is. So, if So, this is what I can uh, infer from this diagram and our argument that if he is charging a price less than C, I should price, I should price my product uh, strictly greater than his price. What if his price is just equal to C? So, this is C, this is alpha, suppose this P j is here. Now, if the price is just equal to C, then if I charge a price less than C, that is P i is less than C, then I get the market, but uh, then this part of the curve becomes relevant. And if this part is relevant, I can immediately see that uh, my profit is negative, it is below the horizontal axis. So, I should not charge a price which is less than P j if his price that is P j is just equal to C. Uh, what should I charge then? If I charge price equal to C or greater than C, then my profit is not given by this curve that I have drawn, but by this horizontal axis. I am getting 0 profit in that case, uh, which means that I should do that. I, because I am not earning positive profit in any case, so what I can best do is to earn 0 profit. So, uh, B 1 sorry B i P j is equal to P i such that 
P i is greater than or equal to P j. If P j is equal to C. So, we have two cases one is P j is less than C one is P j is just equal to C and we have seen that the best response functions are different. Uh, thirdly, suppose this price is P m. Thirdly, if P j is greater than P m, suppose the price that he is charging is more than P m. <coughs> Uh, then what should I do is that my maximum profit is being attained at PM. So, I should charge a price which is PM because by charging PM I am getting the market at the same time I am maximizing my profit. So, in that case my profit is uh, sorry my optimum price is PM. So, it is just a single value if p j is greater than p m. Uh, what happens if p j less than p m or equal to p m, but greater than c what should the firm do, firm I do? This is something which we shall take up in the next class. So, uh, before wrapping up this particular lecture, let me take you through what we have done in this lecture. We have conclu concluded the section on uh, Kurno equilibrium and Kurno model as such uh, and we have seen that the Kurno model essentially depicts a situation of uh, overgrazing of common resources in the sense that people tend to overproduce in Kurno equilibrium uh, than what they should have produced if they were interested in maximizing their joint profit. That is so there is a general model in which we can fit in the Kurno model. And secondly, we have started our discussion of Bartram equilibrium, which is a different from the Kuno model in the sense that here the producers are de deciding their prices and trying to maximize their profit. We have started the discussion, we shall continue with this in the next lecture. Thank you. Question How can the Nash equilibrium in the Kuno model be seen as an as an outcome of overproduction? In Kuno equilibrium, Production of output of each firm is equal to alpha minus c divided by 3 and the profit is uh, we have seen alpha minus c divided by alpha minus c whole square divided by 9. Now, we have also seen that if they cooperate if they collude and maximize profit, maximize joint profit, they should produce alpha minus c divided by 4, which is in fact less than alpha minus c divided by 3. And R alpha minus c whole square divided by 8 as individual profit. So, uh, it turns out that when they are not colluding and acting as individual players, then they are producing more alpha minus c divided by 3 compared to the case when they collude. Uh, because when they collude and maximize the total profit, they produce alpha minus c divided by 4 which is less. And in fact, in collusion their profit is more than uh, when they operate individually. So, that is why we say that uh, in, in the equilibrium, in the Kurno equilibrium, uh, the firms are ending up by producing more 
and uh, when they produce more the prof prices go down and profit also is less than what it could be. Okay, the second question in the Bartra model which variables the firms have control over briefly describe the model. Uh, firms here decide individual prices so if there are two firms p1 and p2 they don't decide uh, by their own uh, wish what the output that they are going to sell in the market once the prices are announced the consumers decide which price is the is the lower price and if they go to a particular firm deciding on the fact that that firm is charging the lower price then that firm will have to meet the demand in the market. So, the quantity produced by the firm is not decided by the firm it is decided entirely by the demand in the market. Okay, this was the part one of the question briefly describe the model. So, in terms of game theoretic language there are n firms suppose which are the players actions each firm decides the price which is a non negative number and payoff payoff is given by payoff of each firm is given by a profit of the firm Okay. So, let us say pi i it is a function of p 1 and p 2 and uh, it is given by the following pi i sorry p i q i minus c q i. Okay. What is q? q is the market nothing but market demand which is given by alpha minus p i minus c again alpha minus p i and so this is equal to alpha minus p i p i minus c if p i is less than p j. Okay if my price is, le is less than the competitors price then I get the entire market. So, this demand function uh, this one is valid for me. If the prices are equal then we share the market. So, it is half of the same price same same uh, profit and if it is my price is more than the other firms price then I get 0 share of the market I do not sell anything and my profit is also 0. Okay, thank you.